Yahweh. My name is Randon Jabaro Jack, and uh, I am currently a Assistant Chief of Agriculture in the Ministry of Natural Resources and Commerce, uh, stationed in uh, Majuro Atoll, Marshall Islands. And I am currently here in, on uh, Jabor Island in Jeloy Atoll, where we have spent a week uh, with uh, doing agriculture assessments and working, working under SUPA along with uh, Majuro Diabetes Wellness Center and uh, Marshall Islands Organic Farmers Association, CMI Land Grant, and uh, the Taiwan Technical Mission. And so uh, our work here is we did a, a couple of assessments in many, as many households as we could here in Jabor, Jaloj, and Imwej. And so the purpose of our surveys is to uh, see, what, see what's going on in our islands and uh, see what they need, what they have been doing uh, in terms of agriculture, so, uh, home gardens, uh, plantations, planting trees that bear fruit. And so we uh, after we analyze our surveys, then uh, we'll come back and provide what is needed to the people and do some trainings, with, uh, for example, for pruning and building up their home gardens. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, working, uh, moving forward with this project. So this one is just a small garden, maybe good for uh, some families that usually the students will plant vegetables here and then they harvest it, they take it to their families and they eat it. So that's basically what we're doing. And so sometimes we come and then once we harvest, we come here and then we cook it for them. So to show them uh, how to cook it. And then, yeah, so when they go home, back to their place, they can eat and then cook it themselves. And if we walk, that's the elementary school here. So actually, we're planning to expand this one on this side. So on this side, we will uh, build more. We will fence it like this. You know, some uh, some pigs here are just free range, so they sometimes they roam around. So we fence. So this area, we will make a bigger garden here for the community, for both for CMI and the elementary school. So that's, that's a big change that we're going to make and it didn't come from us. Actually, we asked them but they said they want this place and basically we don't, we come here to help but we don't force them what they want to do so they want to make it bigger and so we will try to help them as well. And okay, my name is Elman. I'm working here on Sabal and Sandar. I'm a supervisor for for Elagistan. The main problem in Shabar community is first one is uh, diabetes. It's the highest in Shabar. And the second one is hypertension. That's the main problem here on Shabar. And some like all around challenge at all. The problem is the food. There is not enough green vegetable. There is no gardening. And people don't uh, like to exercise because maybe they are lazy. They don't want to make right food for us or the family. And that is the problem here on Chabor. Nobody come on, I appreciate We thank for Mr. Roger and his team to come and. The burning of the trees in Chabor is one of the best solutions ever, or the, the recommended uh, one for the people of Chabor and Chalut. For example, see the Spanish tree here, it is it's not brown, so it goes all the way up 
if you look on the other side or if you go on the left you'll see that all breadfruit trees all trees in in here they are affected by the what they call the salt spray so the salt spray enables us to think that the best solution or that the solution that is good for the people of Jabwar is to prune and pruning is a best solution for all all of them okay to to prune you cut a six uh, if example if you're pruning a breadfruit tree breadfruit tree you, you measure from the from the trunk of the tree up six feet or six to eight feet then you cut so when when you prune it will come out brand new uh, branches and then when the branches are come out they when the branches come out there there's going to be many of them so you have to have cut to make it two so it will be it will help the tree feed only two people only two mouths but if you let it go with uh, 14 16 uh, new branches it's going to be hard for the trees so when when it goes up and then you keep pruning the two two branches will become more and more when when they grow but in the in the at the first time of pruning it, it is recommended to to leave two the carding that is good for here is the uh, we call it a wicking wicking system that's the best one because you you lay them the plastic bag and even if the soil comes up it will just come up, up with to the, to the plastic bag and stop there it doesn't go all the way up to the ground so when you put down put back the soil on top of, of, of the weeding system it's going to raise it's going to be high higher because you put soil uh, rocks in there and then you put the screen and you put the soil it's going to be higher <clears throat> uh, we have to thank the the government of the of Chalo Dodolpi for allowing us to come in and do this we want to help them improve their ha uh, habit of eating and habit of uh, farming because you know we don't like to have ob obese all over the island just like we experience in some other places of the world so many obese because they lay down and they tell some so many lies but you know in in Jawa we want to help them tell some lies and at least they have to, something to subsidize whatever food they have So the Marshall Islands have some unique issues, difficulties with agriculture, and one is saltwater inundation. And saltwater inundation happens in two different ways. Like here is a low spot and there, there are some holes in it. And when the tides get very high, saltwater will actually rise up out of the ground and, and make this area very wet and very salty. And also some of the other areas that are closer to the ocean side sea walls when the tides get uh, high every once a month at the highest tides especially if there's a strong wind blowing waves will actually come over the sea walls and and drown areas around there so there were gardens there in the past but they've been destroyed by the salt so but people still there would still like to do gardening so we're looking at different kinds of container and raised bed gardens to deal with that problem in the next time Hello, my name is Katrine and I'm a dietitian from Australia through Australian Volunteers Program, which is funded by the Australian Government. We're here in Jaluit. We're doing an assessment through the Super Grant. So we've been doing a nutritional assessment, looking at what people eat and how this is reflected in their weight, their blood pressure, their blood sugar, and also their waist circumference. So we've also been looking at the school students, what they eat. So it's about 600 students in the high school and they're fed three times a day through the school cafeteria. All the food is transported from Maduro, um, so it has to last a long time because they only get food four times per year. So they don't really use any local foods in the school menu. Mostly they have a lot of bread for breakfast, for lunches and dinners. They have white rice with some gravy, with some canned meat and some canned vegetables. Um, but of course this is not enough for a growing child. So we've been talking to the kids about how they feel about the food and they say there's not enough food, they have to eat more foods, they have to buy it from the stores here and cook it themselves. Um, so that's hopefully something we can work on and try and get more local produce, get some bananas and some breadfruit and things that they grow here, get that part of the school menu. And then we've also been looking in the community. 
So in the community, in some of the places further away from Jabor, so on Image and on Jaluit Jaluit, they eat quite a lot of local produce. However, in Jabor, they have more stores, so they have more rice and donuts and bread and things like that. But the good thing is that everyone is really keen to make some changes. So they're always asking, what can we do? What should we do differently? And what we, I think we can especially work on as well is getting them to use the banana flour because they all have banana flowers, but they don't know how to eat it. So everyone is very interested to find out what to do. So I think there's a lot of potential and I think we'll be able to make a difference here.